Welcome back to the bench. Have this Viltec function generator to take a look at momentarily. But just want to give everyone a special thanks for watching, helping the channel grow, leaving comments. I try to answer questions and reply to comments as much as I can, but you know I just can't get to everybody because there's just so many now. Also give a special thanks to Matt who sent me some headphones. Really appreciate it. He's the guy who sent me this little tube preamp to review. So that's really great. If you want to send me something to take a look at or make a video on or you know whatever, you can send it to P.O. Box 362, Vandalia, Ohio, 45377. Okay, what's on the bench today is this Fieldtech. FY3200S dual channel arbitrary function generator. I picked this thing up off of eBay for I think it was like $56 free shipping. A US seller so I got it in about three days. I didn't want to spend a lot on a signal generator but I did want to replace this one here that's pretty high distorted limit in frequency to about 200k. Uh, limited waveforms and things like that. A lot of distortion, as I say. So, uh, I wanted to see how this thing worked out. And, you know, I didn't want to spend three, four hundred dollars on something from Rigel or Siglin or, you know, somebody like that for a nicer one that's just a little bit out of my budget. And I don't think I would give it enough use. So I want to see if this thing will perform good enough for my audio tests. And we'll take a look at some other functions of it. I'm not going to do a full complete review. There's tons of videos that review this thing. I'm just going to go over the basics. And you know, try to keep the video in a reasonable length. Okay, let's fire this thing up. Ref4 2017. So it appears it has a pretty recent revision on it. Here's the front panel. MF seems to indicate channel 1, or I guess they mean main channel. And if I hit this button, I get SF for second channel, I would assume. And I can go back to the main channel has a little cursor you can move around and use the dial to set the level you can press the dial to change the units you see how they change there hitting the parameter button just cycles through various parameters like amplitude that's in peak to peak volts by the way so 10 volts peak to peak and of course you can adjust that up and down Offset voltage, duty cycle, that's for square wave. Phase, you can adjust the phase relative to the channels. And then we're back to that. Uh, waveform, you can cycle through the different waveforms. You have sine wave, square, pulse, triangle, sawtooth, inverted sawtooth, DC, you just adjust the offset and you have a DC output. It has a bunch of presets with uh, various waves and noise in there. You can store arbitrary waveforms using the software. I think somebody has a video showing how you can do that. And we're back to sign. It has a frequency counter mode. So you just insert a signal into that and it'll you know, act like, as a frequency counter, has a like a pulse counting mode, and some other types of modes and triggers. It has a sweep function. You can set a linear or logarithmic starting frequency, ending, how long you want the sweep to take, and you know back to the beginning, and some other system functions. I guess that save power on frequency, you can adjust that. Now, I'm not clear. It looks like there's registers to load 
frequencies in or something. I'm not clear on what that is. And we have frequency channel 1 equals channel 2. I guess you can make it follow the other channel for easy setting. And back around again. And we're in. Just remove four screws on the bottom. Pretty empty inside here. Here's the power supply board. Version 1.5 I see down there. There was a complaint of electrical leakage, so I'll have to investigate that. All the action happens here on the front board. This must be the output device. I can see there's 200 ohm resistors in parallel for both channels, so it's a uh, 50 ohm output impedance. Notice the mains has exposed connections, especially over here on the switch. There's no double insulating or anything. Uh, no certification labels. Got a flip down bail thing. TTL A and B, just a TTL level signal output, USB. That's pretty much it for the look inside. One complaint about this device is the mains electrical leakage. And I'm measuring from the shield or the ground here to a true earth ground. And I'm getting about 58 volts. Of course here in the US we're on 120 volts. So yeah, that's significant leakage. And I can turn the plug around because it's not polarized and I still get the same voltage. Let's check the uh, current. Microamps. 216 microamps. So that is fairly significant. You could actually damage some sensitive equipment because you know if you hit it at the right part of the waveform, at the peak of the waveform, the charge stored at that voltage level could, you know, possibly blow out the input of sensitive equipment. That's not really a fault of the supply. It's just that they didn't ground it. They should have a grounded terminal on the mains and grounded internally to the shields of these connectors. You have it hooked up to the scope. There is no load on the output, it's just direct to the scope. And we'll just run through the waveforms real quick. So of course this is sine wave, square wave, pulse. I have to move the trigger to see that. Triangle, salt tooth, inverted salt tooth. And that's the DC one where you can uh, you know, adjust the offset. And there's just some oddball waves stored in this thing. Looks like some sort of noise. Electrocardiogram kind of looks like. Trapezoid. Whatever that thing is. And a bunch of different pulses at various amplitudes. And just a bunch of random waves. Okay, we'll take a look at the frequency limits of this thing. First off, I set the scope probes to 10x mode. It's very important to do that at higher frequencies. Normally with the audio frequency spectrums I test with, I use the scope in 1x mode because, you know, I want a lower noise floor. But in this case, I have to set the probe in scope to 10x mode. So the capacitive loads in the, uh, the probe wires and everything doesn't affect our signal as much. Okay, so we're starting at one megahertz. The meter is set for 10 volts peak to peak output. Scope says it's uh, 10.5. And I'll just step one megahertz at a time. I do notice a slight jitter. It's not as stable. 
Oops, I'm in voltage. Amplitude, I gotta get back to frequency. Okay, here we go. That's two. Looks like we're getting some sort of ripple. But the voltage is staying steady. We're at 10 kilohertz, or I'm sorry, megahertz now. Voltage actually went up. That could be a inductive or capacitive effect. Not necessarily a fault of the function generator. It's starting to ramp off and, you know, we're losing that clean sine wave look at around 17 megahertz. It's pretty clean up around 12 megahertz, but you can see it's starting to ramp off now. Okay, this is 24, and we're down to around 7 or 8 or so volts peak to peak. So I guess it could be usable, but the, uh, the distortion is probably not going to be that great. Like I say, around 12 megahertz it cleans up and looks pretty good. So now I hook the output to a 1K metal film resistor. That'll act as the heaviest load I would probably ever use this thing on being the input of an audio amplifier. So I want to use that as my baseline. So I set the frequency to 1 kilohertz. Right now the amplitude is 9 volts peak to peak or roughly 3 volts RMS. And you can see the uh, spectrum's actually pretty clean. There is a very small second harmonic, a little blip of a third harmonic, and very small higher order harmonics. Well, that is a reasonable performance from a $56 function generator. However, it's too much to use for audio amplifier testing because you know, those blips going in are going to be coming out. So I won't be able to tell if the amplifier is producing that or the function generator. So I'm going to have to still continue using my music player and preamp. Because those have a distortion that's like 0.002%. It's very low. It works great for testing amplifiers. But while I'm at it here, I will test some other frequencies. Okay, we're looking at 20 hertz now. Of course, the update's a lot slower because you know, it's such a low frequency, you have to get enough waveforms in there. But you can see it's very clean. The blips do change. It could be a quantization error type issue. But, you know, not bad at all at 20 hertz. Here's at 20 kilohertz. Looks very clean here. Not bad at all. Too bad it's not clean across the entire audio spectrum though. That would be nice. Well, I need to wrap this up now. The video is getting pretty long. Like I said, I could spend a lot more time testing more features of this thing. But, you know, I, I need a couple hours to do that. So let's wrap this up and let me give you my overall opinion of the thing. As far as the bad points, we do have that mains electrical issue. I would just earth the thing before using it and it will be fine. It's not really a power supply problem. It's just that they didn't use a ground on it. Why didn't they ground the thing like every other piece of test equipment? I know it's Chineseium. Distortion is not as bad as I expected at in the audio spectrum, but it is there and it does preclude it from being used as audio test equipment. While it does reach up to 24 megahertz, at least with the sine wave, it does say that the square wave is limited at, I think, around 6 megahertz. On the good side, it has a nice bright display. It's pretty intuitive to use most of the functions. It is only 56 bucks for a reasonable 
function arbitrary type waveform generator but if it's worth it I would leave that up to you so that wraps up my review on the field tech feel the field tech quality arbitrary function generator thanks for watching